I'm Joe Duffy of OffshoreInsiders.com, and along with Troy West of TroyWins.com, we are going to be previewing the NBA Finals, the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors. Of course, the Golden State Warriors, historically big favorites in this one. Troy and I are going to discuss if there's a realistic path for Cleveland to pull off this stunning upset or not, and we're going to get Troy's thoughts in a moment. But again, if you're not already subscribed to Sportsbook Reviews, YouTube page, you definitely want to do it. Great baseball handicappers. I know for the various European soccer leagues, you got great information for that. So if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe right this very second. Well, Troy, Golden State, and this is, look, I don't think this is much of a shock. I said at the beginning of the playoffs, Cleveland, simply because of LeBron James, I wouldn't be surprised if they go to the NBA Finals. So they did pull off uh, upsets that offshore in Las Vegas, at least, said were some some upsets and of course even finally finally a team beat the Boston Celtics on the road in that must win game and it was LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers but as I said before the Western Conference Finals have been saying all along thought the Houston Rockets a legitimate championship contender clearly but we had a legitimate championship contender going against an all-time great team is there any realistic path to where Cleveland can pull this upset? You know, Joe, I got to say no. You know, this is this to me is an extremely disappointing NBA Finals. You know, a lot of people say, well, we've got the two best players in the world on the same floor. Of course you do, Kevin Durant and LeBron James. And it's going to be a great matchup. But when you look at the role players of both teams and, and you look at even the depth of the both teams' benches, they're just not comparable. Even in, from a coaching standpoint, Tyron Lue, I think, gets a little bit too much credit for what he's done with Cleveland. I, you know, I think this Cleveland Cavaliers team at, at times, especially throughout the course of the year, has very much underachieved. It's been kind of the LeBron James show in the playoffs where you almost wonder if there isn't, even is a basketball coach for the Cavaliers. It kind of seems like LeBron James dictates everything that goes on. But, you know, there's a lot of factors that, that play into Cleveland's here a little bit is one thing I was listening to, uh, Joe was, um, the way that the format's set up, you know, they're going to tip off Thursday night, and after Thursday, they don't play again until Sunday. Then after Sunday, they don't play again until Wednesday. So the rest factor, which LeBron James is going to be the one that needs the rest, that plays a little bit into his favor. But, you know, you got Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson. You've got so many guys that you can throw at LeBron James. I think Steve Kerr, he, he's one that's been able to coach against LeBron James at a pretty high level. Uh, they've obviously seen him at his highest level. So you've you got to think Golden State's going to win this thing in four or five. You know, like I said, Cleveland gets a little bit of a break the way the format's set up, but that's the only break I really see them having right now, Joe. Troy, I'm going to have to agree with you. We've certainly had some disagreements when we've done videos, but I think you nailed the analysis just perfectly. Yep, I agree with you that because of the rest between games, that clearly is going to be benefit the team with less depth, which is Cleveland, which, of course, has LeBron James and everyone else. Now, I do I have said that I think Kevin Love is a much better player, and the last I checked, he's still considered to be, you know, maybe a game-time decision. He was in concussion protocol, but with the game spread out, hopefully from Cleveland's standpoint, most he would miss is game one, but that's still a big game one. And as you said, Cleveland or, or uh, Golden State has three tremendous athletes that they can throw at LeBron James, so they're going to win the battle of attrition. I know that George Hill, statistically, when you look at the advanced analytics, he is matched up pretty well against Steph Curry in his uh, career. Uh, but uh, and you know, had yeah, Steph Curry is only averaging 19 points per game, while George Hill is averaging 13.1. So, in some respects, Cleveland matches up fairly well there, but it's just a, a simply a case of numbers, where the Cavaliers, there, there's five stars on the uh, court, and, and uh, Golden State's going to have four of those. Now, okay, maybe, maybe you do want to make an argument that Kevin Love could be the uh, a sixth star there, but, you know, they, they maybe have the first and the sixth best player on the court. I do think, from a standpoint of a prediction, and, you know, like I like to say, it's a little different when if, if I were a newspaper writer and I made a prediction without even looking at the point spreads and the, the odds to win it, etc. I still think that maybe Cleveland, to extend it to seven games, Golden State in seven is uh, 
I think plus 330, which is a pretty good pick. I just think LeBron James is that great. He will find some way to win, especially at home. So maybe I do think the series could be a little bit more interesting than most people do. Of course, if Golden State wins in four or five, that's not going to be a shock. I even I thought they were going to be used in, in four or five. But it, it kind of comes down to, you know, what I've said all along. The better team always matches up uh, better against the inferior team. I do think that, you know, Houston uh, missed a lot of open looks, so maybe, maybe if uh, Cleveland, they can shoot better than, than Houston does. Like I said, I think they can extend it. Uh, Andre Iguodala, of course, missed the last four games for the Warriors. He's a big defensive player, but still, Golden State's so great. Uh, you know, they, they can survive without an Iguodala, though uh, you certainly don't want to um, underestimate how important he is. And even that, you know, the statistics that I like as far as the points per 100 possessions, Warriors are uh, plus 10.3 in the postseason compared to just 1.2 for the Cavs. And of course, Golden State had a tougher path here. So I, as much as, you know, I like to use that scientific method, come up with a theory and try to disprove it. I just don't think there's any realistic path other than freaky injuries and, and all this other stuff. But as, as far as, you know, the prop bets, uh, Troy, how long do you think it's going to be before Golden State hoists the NBA, uh, the Larry O'Brien Trophy, I guess it's called? Is it going to be four games, five games, six games, or can the great LeBron James make it interesting and even have a Game 7? I truly think it's going to be a four or five games. And, you know, I know we'll probably talk about the lines here in a minute, but my God, it's minus 12. I mean, you know, minus 12 in Oracle going into tomorrow. And it's obviously going to be probably minus 12 on Sunday as well. So for an NBA underdog to pull off a minus 12 as an outright winner, which Cleveland will have to do, I don't see it happening. So when it goes back to Cleveland, it'll be really interesting to see where this line changes. Will it go from, you know, 12 to six, 12 to five? You know, I don't know, but I do think Golden State is just far too good. And I, I just kind of see LeBron James, I, I, he's going to come out with all of his fight. But at the same time, you know, there's got to be a little bit piece in his head that's going, my God, I, can I do this by myself again? I've done it through the Eastern Conference Finals and, and done it all the way through the Eastern Conference playoffs. But can I do it against Golden State? I just don't see it happening. I think frustration could really build up in Cleveland if they go down 2-0. And, you know, like you said, Kevin Love being a huge question mark in game one. If he doesn't play, I think they have absolutely no chance in game one. If he comes back and comes back healthy, maybe he helps them and elevates them to a game. But, boy, I think this is over in four or five games. It's really disappointing because, you know, years past, this has been a phenomenal series. And it has gone six, seven games. And we've seen some of the best NBA Finals of all time with these two teams, but this year just feels a lot different. With that being said, you know, I heard something the other day, and, you know, Golden State has looked vulnerable at times. They looked vulnerable against Houston, but, you know, Golden State's motivation factor to me is kind of the, the interesting one. They've won their championships, Curry and Thompson and those guys, they've all won it. So throughout the course of the year and even into the playoffs, you kind of just saw Golden State just kind of lackluster at times. It'll be interesting to see if they go into the NBA Finals, as crazy as that sounds. Will they be lackluster at times? Who knows? And if they are, maybe Cleveland can nip them. But, boy, I, I don't see it. I think Golden State wants to put another feather in the cap, and I think it's going to happen in four or five games. And I will say, as Troy Alloy alluded to game one, that big favorites generally are good plays in the postseason. I've said I also like to study the public betting uh, trends, and I've used contrarian plays and sharp versus square plays. Really, across sports, the public loves betting favorites and big favorites during the regular season. Once we get to the postseason, the public all of a sudden starts liking underdogs, and I haven't really taken a look at the early betting patterns to see if here yet again they are going with the uh, underdog, and the odds makers know what they're doing. You know, it's generally underdogs are pretty good plays during the regular season, where not so coincidentally the public likes favorites, and then all of a sudden the big favorites actually become pretty good plays in the postseason because the public likes betting underdogs. All in all, the public likes betting on quality teams, so that's why they usually bet on favorites, but of course the deeper you go into the postseason, you're going to have quality teams as underdogs. So, yeah, I, I know that, you know, especially in my, my early uh, years of handicapping, sort of my knee-jerk reaction would be, man, you're giving a team that was good enough to make the NBA Finals a ton of points, 
And the truth is, you know, when I was uh, 25 or 26 years old, which was, okay, I'll admit, a long time ago, my gut would have told me, you got to bet on the um, Cleveland Cavaliers in game one. However, now the computer software has gotten better and better, and I look at it and I'm like, big favorites are actually pretty good plays in the postseason. And, as I've said, the two biggest home court advantages are generally game one and game seven. Now, that's statistically proven, of course, when you have, uh, you know, arguably the road team is the better team, as we we saw in the uh, conference finals, that may not hold up quite as much. But in this case, I think it's a classic case where the better team, well, nobody disagrees, the better team does have the home court advantage, and usually game one is a pretty good um, home bet. Um, and the game seven, you know, if it, if it gets that far, is. But, but still, you know, the public, you do tend to like big underdogs in postseason, especially deep in postseason, but be careful here. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I know you sort of alluded to it, Troy. The, the side isn't a ton of points, but, but also, you know, the total. The defensive intensity goes up. Golden State and Houston was in a surprisingly low-scoring series. Uh, what do you think about, you know, the total? Not just game one, but maybe kind of looking ahead. Is this going to be lower scoring, much like the Western Conference Finals? Uh, where is, you know, Cleveland going to go completely Half court, you know, in the days of bliss, they used to like to do that a lot more. Of course, Tyron Lou likes to play a little bit more up tempo, but you know, will Cleveland try to slow it down? I always say betting totals is so much more about pace than it is offensive or defensive competence. What do you feel about the total? Both maybe you know, game one and maybe just general thoughts for the series. Yeah, general thoughts the series. I think unders are going to be the play. I think I do think Cleveland is going to have to slow it out. They they absolutely if they go into this run and gun style and think that they're going to beat the Warriors, they're out of their minds. Now, you know, I also think you know I was wrong a little bit in that Boston series. You know, LeBron James ended up having an outstanding series, but I think that the Golden State Warriors are one of those teams that, like we talked about earlier, they can throw out many different people at LeBron James, and LeBron's going to get his points he always does but I think in this series more than any other series throughout the playoffs so far it is going to be extremely difficult for him to get it done and I also think I have to think that fatigue is going to set a factor at some point he just played another seven game series against the Celtics now he's got to turn back and, and we go into tomorrow and face the you know the greatest team arguably of all time and so you know LeBron James at some point at his age fatigue will set in I, I don't think he, I, I still think he's going to get his points, but I don't think you're going to see these 45 and 13 and 12 type of lines. So I think unders are truly going to be the play. I think Cleveland's going to slow it down, which will force Golden State to slow it down. I think a lot of these scores are going to be like 105 90 type of basketball games, 105 95 type basketball games. So I think unders are going to be okay here. I would tend to agree with you. And like I said, with, with George Hill matching up pretty well um, against Golden State, and, and we certainly agree that Cleveland, if they can shorten the game, as they say, not like Golden State's going to have any more motivation to speed things up than they would have in, in other series, although you know they did kind of slow it down maybe with uh, Houston being one of the few teams that could could keep up with them. I always say that, you know, when it comes to lethargy, it shows up uh, more on the defensive end. So the fact that they really bleed it out and they will have some rest in between the games, as Troy was saying, that that should benefit the defense. So I think as a, I would happen to agree with Troy uh, there as well, that as a general rule, I do think that uh, it'll probably be an under series. And, you know, it's I still stand by what I said all along, the most deceptive statistics entering the postseason was Cleveland's defensive stats. Look, they're not one of the top uh, defensive teams in the NBA, but I think they were pacing themselves during the regular season. They've turned it up a little bit in the postseason. So I think, you know, Troy and I are, are fairly much seeing eye to eye, other than I, I'm the one who thinks that LeBron James is that ridiculously great. He can steal some games. You know, there's no question that, like I said, the three greatest athletes, team sport athletes I've seen in my lifetime – the current order would be uh, Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan, and LeBron James, but LeBron could be four to seven games away from uh, changing that order and going all the way to number one. But I, I think that's about the only area where Troy and I disagree a little bit. I, I just think that LeBron will somehow find a way to steal some games, especially at home, but it looks like we're, we're seeing uh, pretty much eye to eye. Well, Troy, why don't you tell everybody what they can get at uh, TroyWins.com? 
Yeah, thanks, Joe. On a really nice run right now, we've got a real good hockey series going with the Vegas Knights. We ended up taking that to, to finish off the Washington Capitals right now. We're 5-2 and two with series bets in the NHL. On a really nice baseball run right now, 35-17. and 17. Come take a look at TroyWins.com. We'll have a real nice play tomorrow on these NBA Finals. And looking forward to covering the rest of this series. And like I said, it's a little bit disappointing. You know, we'll see what happens. But I truly do hope it's a close series. So looking forward to it. Come take a look at TroyWins.com. Happy to give you a free trial. And things continue to go well with me at OffshoreInsiders.com. I'm literally two days away from my, my 30th anniversary in the business. Sold my first picks 30 years ago in uh, two days, maybe by the time you're you're watching this. Uh, and, and WNBA found out a lot of my theories that cross sports are also working in the WNBA. I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert on the WNBA. If you're going to say, well, I want you to name uh, three players on this team. But my computer says... Some of the angles or many of the angles that work in other sports are definitely working in the WNBA. Been doing uh, well in the NHL as well. Join me at OffshoreInsiders.com. Well, won't bore you with the details. It's been a little bit more of a hectic uh, travel schedule for me uh, lately. But we'll take a look at both the NBA schedule and my, my travel schedule. I'm headed to Columbus, Ohio uh, for take my son to see uh, hi well we've already been there but we, he's got his orientation then i just got a phone call another potential family emergency who knows uh say some prayers uh you know for for my for my dad but well troy and i will be back in a few days we'll handicap the rest of this uh series and uh, make sure you subscribe to sportsbook review so you never ever miss a report Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.